Hi, David. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. China's economy is slowing, and China's private equity industry is in a more challenging place than before. Where do you think the private equity industry in China is, and where do you think the market is headed? I think right now people are, uh, as particularly as the Chinese economy is uh, beginning to slow down a bit, and the effects of the stimulus of 2009 and 2010 are, are wearing off, uh, and the uncertainty hanging over the overall markets from the eurozone crisis, uh, the ongoing issue around the euro, uh, the ongoing issue around the U.S. fiscal cliff, and those things. So there are a lot of a lot of uncertainty in the world. So all those things combine to make uh, investors as well as um, potential investee companies cautious. And so we've gone from a kind of a go-go period into a let's think about this a bit more carefully, think more about how we create value long term and also how we realize value long term. There's been a lot of learning in the Chinese private equity market in the last few years, partly due to the fact that you know this is one of the markets in the world where private capital plays a really large role for smaller, fast-growing companies. How have you changed your own strategy in terms of how do you choose funds to back in China? You know, currently we track on our system about 400 fund managers in China alone. Now, of that universe, we've invested in a relatively small number, about 20 managers, usually across more than one fund cycle. The, the thing is about China that it is a broader market. It's more deep and, and broad than any of the other Asian private equity markets. Uh, at the later end of the market, at the later stage of the market, we've invested with Hongyi Capital. We've been invested with Hongyi for a long time, for a series of funds now. As the private equity ecosystem has changed, Hongyi has also changed. Hongyi is really focusing increasingly on some of the things that other private equity funds cannot do, such as having in-house consulting teams, working with portfolio companies to transform them and achieve their business strategies. As a fund of funds manager or any, any investor in private equity funds, the manager selection process is absolutely critical. You need to have thought through the risks and decided if they're manageable or not and are acceptable or not. And then you make the decision when you sign up, you're really in for the duration. Um, there are circumstances where you need to divorce. So one of the things we always insist on when we go into a fund manager is a no-fault divorce clause. This is standard in many, in many fund terms. It's not so standard in Asia, but we've been, Squadron Capital has been very proactive in negotiating uh, terms that we consider to be standard for the global private equity market. Can you tell us some investment that didn't turn out as expected? And also what kind of lesson did you learn from that? We've been fortunate so far. We haven't had a fund that has been a mistake. I think some of them have been disappointing in their inability to pursue the strategies that they, that they set out to pursue. And that has not necessarily to do with their own fault. Some of it has to do with changes in the market. But some of it has to do with you know, circumstances beyond their control. For example, one of our fund managers had a, member, a senior member of the team who was tragically killed in an accident. And one of the things you learn about this business is that it's, it's a fairly, these are fairly small companies. The general partners of these funds really generally rely on three or four people to make the fund successful. And so when you, when you choose to invest with a smaller fund, the key people are very important. We've also been disappointed in some cases by the willingness of some members of teams to stick it through, to, to stay on, or to see through the life cycle of a fund. And there, you know, again, it's a judgment we make. We've learned a lot about what, what motivates people. So we focus very much on our due diligence processes on alignment of interests and long-term alignment, making sure the economic incentives are right. But we also focus on the chemistry between the people. And that's a qualitative judgment that's difficult to make. And we haven't always got it right. So in one case, I won't name names, but we have, we have found that the, the two key people in a fund uh, had personality clashes that over time became irreconcilable. Now, the, fortunately, one left and the other one has been able to keep the fund on course. But clearly, there were moments when we were anxious, they, they were anxious and we were anxious about their ability to keep going and, and how they would succeed with, with a diminished team. Lastly, what's your outlook for China's private equity industry? Well, I continue to be you know, optimistic that the best general partners will find interesting opportunities in the next coming you know, phase of the economic development of China. Urbanization will continue, the middle class will continue to develop in China, and so those drivers will, will continue to be there. And we should see some moderation in valuation, and so hopefully we'll get some excellent returns for the next couple of years of vintages. The, a lot of the funds that have been raised in the last few years um, are going to take time to realize their returns. So one of the issues around these GPs is will they be able to keep their teams together? Um, 
people that entered into this thinking it was a get-rich-quick scheme have realized that it usually isn't. It's a long-term get-rich scheme. Uh, private equity investing takes time. So I think there may be some, some changes in teams or organizations as liquidity proves difficult to get for the next couple of years. That's one manager level risk. Thank you so much, David. My pleasure, Nina.